Kia ora koutou. welcome to Whiteboard Friday. This week we're looking at will farm prices fall? So this is in response to a new paper from Phil Janot at Ag First, uh, looking at the impact on our farm land prices as we put in place environmental limits. So that's reducing the amount of impact that our farming practices have on the environment, perhaps by leaching less into waterways, uh, perhaps by using less water, or even reducing our greenhouse gas emissions. Phil's calculated, he reckons that the impact on land prices from these sorts of limits will be $40 billion, a pretty breathtaking number. So we're just going to look at whether that number is correct and even then, if it is correct, should we really care about it? So first up, to really understand where this $40 billion comes from, we have to understand the different drivers of land prices. First up's the productive use. So that's when we use land to make something to sell to make money from it. What's the return on investment? And the answer is that actually the return on investment from our farms is usually pretty low and extremely variable. So dairy at least has a reasonable return in the region of 5%. Sheep and beef, it fluctuates around 2% uh, and very poor correlation between land prices and the amount of profit that we actually make. So productive land uses, probably not a good predictor of land prices. Second up, consumptive value. So that's the enjoyment you get from living on a farm, from waking up in the morning, going out on a cold winter's day, standing in a cow pat. We've all done it, it feels great. Consumptive values, living on a farm, it's wonderful, but unfortunately we have no idea how much that impacts on land prices. So it's a big question mark, but we know it is a reason why people pay more for farms. Lastly is the speculative reasons. And this is, <laughs> in the past has been a real driver over the last 23 years. We know that dairy farms have returned on average about 7% per year in terms of capital gain. Untaxed by the way, nice little racket that one. Sheep and beef even more startling at around about 9%. So this has clearly in the past been a major driver of land prices and why people buy and speculate in farms but it's not sustainable. You can't sustain that sort of value growth ongoingly in terms of uh, capital gain. It's purely happening because that area is not taxed, so people are putting more money into it. So that has been a major driver of land prices, but can't continue to be in the future. So I would suggest some uh, adjustment in land prices is inevitable regardless. So some of that 40 billion could purely be because of the speculative, uh, the over speculation in land, uh, land prices as it is. But what's Phil, what Phil's done is that he has just looked at the productive value of land and how much that could be impacted by environmental limits. So he's taken the case of Lake Taupo, which is a great, uh, great example where we've limited the amount of nutrients uh, that could be leached into, into the lake, trying to keep that lake pristine. And that has dropped land prices there, dairy land prices by about 27% and sheep and beef prices uh, by around about 37% higher for sheep and beef because uh, they can't convert their land to dairy anymore. So what uh, Phil's done is then extrapolate these land values right across the country, these, this drop in land values right across the country, and that gives us the 40 billion figure. Now I would suggest that that is overpriced, partly for this reason, uh, that you know, uh, our land values are already overblown due to speculative reasons, but also because Topor is very much a worst case scenario in terms of environmental limits. The kind of land that we have there, the delicacy of that lake, I don't, see we'll see, I don't think we'll see those harsher limits put in place in the rest of the country. And science and, and uh, you know, uh, advisors have shown that you can actually reduce the amount of pollution on farms with, uh, by a little bit without actually reducing the profit at all. So we could see some improvements in water quality without any impact on the productive value of land. That said, there are parts of the country that are like Taupo where there's simply too many cows on the land and the land is too delicate and the water is too delicate to really be able to handle it. So we will see, perhaps in Canterbury, uh, other parts of the country, uh, we will see this, these sorts of uh, impacts in certain places. But the other point that's been brought up by scientists that Phil uh, hasn't taken into account in, in his paper is the consumptive value of land. And as we improve water quality, this will rise. People will want to live next to lovely rivers that their kids can swim in without sharing it with a dead sheep or cow, like we've seen up in Nunguru this week. So actually the consumptive values will rise and might actually countervail some of that loss in productive value. 
But last, the final question we've got to ask is, even if this number is overblown, which I, I, I think it is, the final question is, should we really be worried about a reduction in land prices? We have seen ongoing speculation for years. It's crazy to be worrying about land prices and focusing on them as some sort of measure of success. What we really want, what really adds value to uh, our economy, is actual productive value of the land, actually getting profitability out of the land. And that needn't necessarily be impacted by environmental values uh, in the same way. There you go. Thanks for watching that right till the end. If you'd like to stay in touch with what we do here at the Morgan Foundation, click here or visit us at morganfoundation.org.nz. Ideas to action.